And Hort alongside my trusty partner, the man called Horty. You know, Thursday afternoon, the Bengals kind of took the blush off the rose in this year's NFL draft, selecting and signing USC quarterback Carson Palmer with the top pick in the draft. But for a team that hasn't been in the playoffs since 1990, that hardly lessened the significance of what happened today. The plan for Carson Palmer is to let him tote a clipboard for a while and learn while watching John Kitna from the sidelines. But with the first picks of the second and third rounds, the Bengals were looking for immediate help. Did they get some? Here's a look at who the Bengals picked. After picking quarterback of the future Carson Palmer in the first round, the Bengals grabbed somebody to help protect him in the second round. University of Iowa offensive lineman Eric Steinbach, a remarkable athlete. He ran 484 in the 40, weighed uh, 300 pounds. Uh, he's about 6'6". For an offensive lineman, he's a freak. He really is. And, and he's a good player, so uh, he's going to grow into his athleticism. And, and uh, when he gets older and starts slowing down, he'll have enough left in his tank where he'll still be a good player. Steinbach played every position on the O-line during his career at Iowa. He'll be a guard or center for the Bengals, but they haven't decided which. We're going to finish the draft. You know, uh, Coach Lewis is uh, committed to taking uh, the best players there. There may be another player. Maybe we have to move guys around, fit things in, and see how that works. With the first pick of the third round, the Bengals chose University of Tennessee wide receiver Kelly Washington. He's 6'2", 220, and ran a 4.35 40-yard dash. He's a big guy that can really, you know, flat run, and was something we felt like we needed to get a guy that not only could run vertically, but also could catch and run the football, run after the catch. Picking Washington is more proof of the emphasis Marvin Lewis places on speed. As a defensive coordinator, he knew how tough it is to defend two lightning-fast wide receivers, and the Bengals already had one in Chad Johnson. It eliminates the fact that people can roll their coverage to Chad all the time, which is what we were starting to see at the end of the year last year. What it does now is it gives us a threat that's on the other side, so if they want to take some, one person away, uh, they can't take two away. So after all the figuring and all the guessing in the mock drafts from here to Cucamonga, here are the top ten in this year's draft. After Palmer, of course, Detroit uses the second pick to take Charles Rogers. Wide receiver out of Michigan State. Number three, wide out Andre Johnson out of Miami goes to Houston. The Jets at four take defensive tackle Dwayne Robertson out of Kentucky. Number five, Dallas takes corner Terrence Newman out of K-State. With sixth pick, New Orleans selects defensive tackle Jonathan Sullivan. At seven, Jacksonville goes for quarterback Byron Leftwich for Marshall. Number eight, Carolina takes Utah. Offensive tackle Jordan Gross. Number nine, Minnesota chooses defensive tackle Kevin Williams from Oklahoma State. And with the number 10th pick, Baltimore selects defensive end Terrell Suggs from ASU. The first local high school or college player picked actually fits under both categories. Antoine Peake, who played his high school ball at Woodard and his college ball at UC. Peake was taken with the third pick of the third round by the Houston Texans. An ideal situation for him because head coach Dom Capers plays a 3-4 defense. That means Peak, who set UC's all-time records for sacks in a game, season, and career as an undersized defensive end, will play outside linebacker in the NFL. Antoine says it was getting a little nerve-wracking waiting for the phone to ring. I'm starting to get frustrated now. You know, it's been a while. And, um, and my phone rings. And when my phone rings, the moment I saw an out-of-town number, I knew that that was the team. And it was the Texans, and he said, I, I don't even know who the guy was. <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, you know. And, and I just seen my name come across the screen, and I ran out the house. <laughs> Working man, indeed. And in the third round, the draft comes close to home again. In the third round, and with a 85th pick overall, the Jets select former Colerain High School running back B.J. Askew out of Michigan, where he played tailback and fullback. And I will safely bet that Kerry Combs is one of the first guys on the phone to congratulate his former player. Up next here on Sports Rep, Saturday night. Time the breakdown, Marvin Lewis says, First draft is head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll hear from him a little later in the show. We'll also go one-on-one -on -one with the top pick, Carson Palmer, and our panel of experts hand out their draft grades. It's who asked you. So where else to begin but at the top? And once again this season, the Bengals are the talk of the NFL draft. But oh, what a difference a year makes. 
Coach Lewis emerges from his first draft as an NFL head coach with four blue chip prospects, all of whom were projected as first round picks at one point or another, beginning with this year's numero uno, USC quarterback Carson Palmer. The Heisman winner becomes the third quarterback taken in the first round by the Bengals in the last 12 years. But Palmer hopes to eventually do what David Klingler and Achilles Smith have been unable to accomplish, and that is lead the Bengals to a winning season. I'm so thankful and, and I've been so blessed with so many great people in my life and, and uh, to, to go into my senior year and, and, and have a good year and, and go to the Orange Bowl and, and win the Heisman and uh, this and, and now I'm getting married and it's just, it just gets better and better each step of the way. Once I get out there next week to camp and, and start putting on the uniform and going out there and practicing, I'm definitely going to feel it and, and hopefully it'll hit me then. And Palmer indeed will be in uniform next weekend for the Bengals' second voluntary mini camp of the offseason. Palmer continues to say all the right things. And couldn't believe their luck when six foot six, 297 pound All American Eric Steinbach was still on the board. Steinbach has played every position on the line, but perhaps injuries may have turned off some teams. Steinbach had knee surgery three years ago and dislocated his elbow in 2001. But the Bengals have no concerns. This guy is a, is a very fine athlete, is an interior offensive lineman. Uh, started out at, at Iowa as a tight end and then moved inside. Uh, to center, tackle, and then into the guard position his last two years. He was a starter there. And uh, just a fine, fine athlete. Not only is he a very good player now, but he's a guy that has athletic ability in the future that he can grow into. So we're very happy. A very productive player now. Really not going to take a lot of development. And um, a guy who has a, a nice upside. On to the third round where the Bengals watch Tennessee wideout Kelly Washington fall out of the first round, out of the second round, and right into a Bengals uniform. Washington, perhaps the best pure athlete in the entire draft, passed over by several teams because of a serious neck injury suffered last season. But the former Florida Marlins prospect says he is 100% healthy, which is good news for the Bengals' other speed burner, Chad Johnson. When Chad was starting to uh, put some numbers up, People were then taking uh, their coverages and rotating them over to Chad to try to take him away. So we had to start moving Chad around a little bit so that they couldn't guess to where he was going to be. What it does now is it gives us a threat that's on the other side. So if they want to take some, one person away, uh, they can't take two away. The Bengals started the fourth round today, choosing highly touted Oregon State cornerback Dennis Weathersby, who would have gone much higher in the draft if he wasn't a victim of a drive-by shooting Easter Sunday in his hometown in California. Weathersby will be out of action six to eight weeks. A bullet is still lodged in his upper left arm. We're extremely excited about him. Um, to be able to get a guy of his caliber uh, at this round in the draft is, uh, is a coup for us. Um, and we think with what he's achieved in, in the Pac-10, and uh, we really believe he's going to be able to elevate his, his talent uh, once he gets to the next level. Now here's the rest of the Bengals' choices. Second pick in the fourth round, Western Kentucky's 5'11", 260-pound fullback, Jeremy Johnson, who can also be used as a running back. Fifth round, outside linebacker, Khalid Abdullah, 6'2", 227, from Mars Hill College with explosive quickness. Now the Bengals in the sixth round go with South Carolina defensive tackle Langston Moore. He has those certain intangibles coaches are looking for in the later rounds. Final round, NC State offensive tackle Scott Kustra. He's 6'5", 316 pounds. Smart guy. Both his parents are doctors. And the Bengals' final choice, Central Florida 6'1", 270-pound defensive end Elton Patterson, who may be a little small for the line, but the Bengals love his determination. So there it is, rounds one through seven. Time for you at home to make the call. What grade would you give Marvin Lewis in his first draft as Bengals head coach? Call 345-1212. Give us your vote. We'll have results a little later in the show. As for the local players, well, UC's Antoine Peake goes to Houston in the third round. Former Coleraine star B.J. Askew heads to the Jets in the third round. Purcell in Northwestern Center, Austin King, a fourth round choice of Tampa Bay. UC wide receiver John Olinger taken by the Falcons in the fifth round. Bearcats cornerback Blue Adams becomes a Lion in the seventh round. And tonight, UC kicker Jonathan Ruffin goes to the Steelers as a free agent. DeMarco McCleskey also the free agent route. To Welcome back. Bengals fans are all getting excited about the coming season, especially after this weekend's NFL draft. It could wind up as the Bengals' best ever. Now let's hear from the new head coach, Marvin Lewis, how he grades his first draft here in Cincinnati. Yeah, we're excited. I think, you know... Uh... Uh, in our minds, it wouldn't have surprised us if all four of those guys had not gone in the first round, our first four selections. You know, wouldn't have, you know, 
blown anybody away to see that happen. So for us to be able to uh, select those guys in two, three, and four, um, we feel real lucky. And, uh, you know, sometimes it works that way. Now we've got to coach them up. One of the things you have to be able to judge about football players, and, and Ricky uh, uh, tested this as well, is you have to try to discern you know, what that guy's made up, what, 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 is, what, is it, what does his heart say? And that's the one intangible that sometimes gets overlooked. What grade would you give Marvin Lewis's first draft as Bengals head coach? 65% give the Bengals an A. Another national poll had just as many fans saying yes, give him an A. 15% go with a B, 11% C, only 9% D or F. They're not so optimistic. Come on, get on the bandwagon, folks. Thanks if you phoned us here tonight.